Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to do not a mid-year freak out book tag because I don't want to. Um, I'm just going to show you, as the title says, this, this is more a shake-in and I'm, I ju I'm just going to show you my five books, my favorite five books till this mid-year and I'm going to start with Philip K. Dick, the master of science fiction with The Three Stigmata of Palmer Eldridge. This is, as I've said, a science fiction book and this is more like a competition between two producers of drugs. We, ha we follow here a main character that is a precognitive, so a person that can predict the future. But the main point here, although this is in a futuristic era where we have interplanetary voyages, we have a colony on Mars, we have precognitives, so many different things that say to us that we are in a futurist futuristic and kind of alternative reality. We have shrinks or psychologists in a suitcase. So, you know, Philip K. Dick in his best. We have, we follow here two men that are producers of drugs. And this type of drugs produce a, a feeling of being in an alternative reality. And people can have uh, hallucinations together. So they go together to the same place, you know, something like that. And I love this book. I read some of books of Philip K. Dick till this moment. And I have to say, this is not my favorite till this point. My favorite is Do Androids Dream of Electric Ship? So that is my favorite, at least till this moment. But this one is, you know, it's awesome as well. And yeah, you have to read it. Then my, in fourth place, oh, I have to do um, a disclaimer. <laughs> I supposedly, I should have done this at the beginning of the video. The books that I'm going to show you are not in a particular order per se. This is not the least interest to interesting to the most interesting because they are different genres. I read them in different periods of time. This is more like a feeling that I had with the book and how gripping I was about the story or how gripped I was about the story, how glued I became and how attached I became surrounding certain book or certain story. So just for you to know, this is more the kind of a feeling, not because I liked more than others, you know what I mean? So there you go. So in fourth place, I have Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. I took a very long time to finish the reading because other, other books came in the way, you know the drill. And this is the story of 1800s in Paris or in France. Um, and we accompany here Jean Valjean that became my favorite character of this book. And, and maybe, perhaps, the same thing, um, my favorite char character of all time. You know, I have, for all the, the books that I'm going to show you, I have videos about them. So if you're interested in knowing a bit more about this 
these stories, you can go and click the links in the shorts or down below and you can go watch those videos. I will be really appreciative of that. And we accompany here a story of a hero, basically. At least my perspective of the book is that. But this book, as perhaps you already know, has many digressions. And he talks about the Battle of Waterloo, the sewers of Paris. And so what he does is he is he takes you out of the main story and he fills pages and pages and pages with text about something. It's supposedly it's in context with with which is happening with what is happening in the story, but at the same time is not. You know? So for is, for instance when he does the digression of the Battle of Waterloo, I was so bored. Uh, and it's not like you're having a, a history lesson or anything, because it makes up almost everything that he tells you during that period or during that part. So, you know, it's stuff about people and places and events and situations that you don't, you don't go anywhere and you are not reading about the main characters that for me takes me out of the story and stalls the story, you know? So that's why in my attribution of stars, I didn't give this book five stars because this book deserves five stars for the main story, but the digressions are so effing boring. However, I have to say that when he talks about the sewers of Paris, I was very much in interested and I found it very curious. But you know, even though this has the type of digressions that I talked to you about. I think you should give this one a try. And if you're not so keen on reading everything like I wasn't, you can do as I did in the Battle of Waterloo. You can read the page like in a fast pace, see if there's anything that you can take or that's interesting or that give something to the main story and if not, pass the page. So there you go. Then in third place I have Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. So this is about the Battle of Thermopylae and the 300 of Sparta and in here we have a slave that was living with the Spartans and that participated in the Battle of the Thermopylae and was captured by, by the Persian army and was taken to the King Xerxes to tell the story of the Spartans because King Xerxes, although he won the battle, he was very... Uh, he had a lot of admiration by the bravery of Spartans. So he wanted to know more about their lives. And there where Sheonis comes in and it's when he going to tell his story life. Since he was a child till the moment he went to live in Sparta and then the narration of the battle in itself. So this is a very round story. Round I mean every single loose end this story is give, gives us is going to be answered a moment later in the book. So for me it was a very satisfying reading. 
and it's wonderful to accompany certain characters in this book they are memorable because they are so strong and so so unique in their own personalities and their own way of living and way of behavior and although this is based on a true story so if you know history you know well i already said it so <laughs> i'm sorry um you know how it, this is going to end but and although this is fictional okay this is fictional but you are there with them you know you want them to be victorious but that's not what happens and they were you know the sacrifice of the greeks as a whole people so that athens had time to reorganize and plan a, a war strategy to win the uh, uh, persian uh, empire and so that is exactly what happens so the spartans were the stall of the persian army so they so athens have more time to organize their army to organize a strategy you know everything surrounding war and king leonidas has a, a, a passage here where he talks about the strength of the spartan women and what they meant to the to greece as a people in this period and time in time and it's so so beautiful and it's so gracious it's 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 really wonderful and you are going to leave this book with these characters in mind with the the mission that almost was successful during the battle and almost gave victory to the spartans so it has so many details that are just beautiful this is a very beautiful story and if you like history i really think you are going to love this one then in second place i have Budenbrook by thomas mann so thomas mann although i only read two books by him till this moment so this one and dr faustus Do dr faustus was actually my first book from this author and i surrender to his talent i think this man had a gift because i love his writing i think he is very meticulous with his words and he writes in a way that is very beautiful in my eyes and something that i give very much importance is to punctuation and i think thomas mann is extremely detailed with his punctuation i know that this is a um, a question of taste so many authors as a portuguese author actually like josé saramago are known not to get by the rules of punctuation and that's why they are so known and so well known in the literature literature world but for me i give very much import importance to well put together punctuation <laughs> uh, and i think thomas mann is perfect on that because the sentences are the commas in the right places and i think for me from to me to understand the message and the phrases and the context and the situations you know the meaning punctuation is everything so i love that about him and well this story is about a german family uh, that is a family of merchants so they are rich but as the subtitle of this um, book gives away this describes 
the decline of this family. So the decline because of bad marriages, the decline because of bad health, the decline because of bad business. It's a mixture or of many circumstances. And my favorite character in this book was Hanu. So the grandson of the first generation that we accompany. And Hanu, although he just appears more to the end of the book and he has a short part in a participation on, in this book, I loved him and he has a very beautiful chapter although his story is very sad as everyone in, in this book um, I don't know I, I, I don't really have an explanation I just thought that him was a very candid character yeah that's it <laughs> please tell me what which character was your favorite? I really think is interesting to know which, which character poked your interest so to see the different tastes in readers. So let me know. And oh, something about this book is that this is the first published book of Thomas Mann. I think he was like 25 years old when he published it. And this supposedly allegedly was based on the story on the own story of his own family and so he even got in trouble with members of his family uh, because they wanted a restitution because he supposedly had used their life story to base his characters so uh, for what I understand, that didn't come through, and, but I don't know how the relationship with his family was after that, you know? So that's why I want to read his biography. I'm really interested and I think this is a really interesting fact about this book. So there you go. And then in first place, I have the Copenhagen Trilogy by Tove Ditlevsen. So this is an autobiography, a memoir, non-fiction. Uh, and the, this is Tove telling us her life story since when she was a child till her adult life. We have her telling us the story with the relationship with her parents, with her brother, how they were from the working class and they even started in a house where they had to sleep all together in a room so they had no privacy then we follow her in the first steps to her passion of writing and how she wanted to become a, a poet by reading a quirky poem and then we, we follow the relationships that she had and how mainly the first husband, she is herself that tells, tells us that, that um, this, tells us this, <laughs> that um, she doesn't know if she married him for interest or for love. In my opinion, this was a, um, a mix of things. So, because she was very emotional, very melodramatic, and so she got involved with this man for different reasons. And I don't think it was only for convenience. I think that something was there, but See, see, she saw potential, so, of course, because it was because of him that she got to, to being published, you know. So, then we accompany her story on how she became a um, drug abuser. And you 
maybe are not expecting the story of how she became a, dr a drug abuser because it's very, very peculiar and in, in a very specific circumstance that that happened. And it was because one sensation that she had that everything changed, changed for her. And she made a decision that would change her life for the, the worst, you know, and revolutionize our life. And it was astonishing. But this book is written in a way that I really appreciated because it's really in a fast-paced way. Like, it doesn't have many paragraphs. She, she does it in... Um, in a very speedy way, if we can say it like that. Um, and with very short chapters, so it's great to get a breath between your reading or during your reading. And it's very fluid, very fast to read. You gravitate towards the story, at least I did. She doesn't dwell on her stories. She tells you the story and she moves forward. So you won't be bored, you know? And, well, this part we don't get in, the, in, the, in this book because this is autobiography. So this is till a moment in time till where, where she wanted to tell her story. But Tov end up killing herself when she was 58 years old and well in some ways you can understand why but in others you can never understand why someone will do that so <sighs> she had a very hard life because then she in this book she even talks about her recovery time and how she end up having uh, Re rebounds is rebounds that you I don't think is the term but I think you know what I mean and how she found love after her dependency so you know it's a very peculiar story we can say and I think it's so interesting to find out life stories about people in other places with in other times so she lived between wars and during the second world war so she will even talk about her perspective on what was happening in europe during that time so it's very very interesting at least i found it and i highly advise you to pick this one up so there we go this is my favorite books surrounding the mid-year of 2023. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please tell me which are your favorite books till this mid-year. I really love to know. I love to know more titles and more authors and maybe found books that I never heard about. So let me know in the comments. Let me know what you thought about my list if you agree with it or not <laughs> and yeah please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications leave a like it helps out the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel follow me on instagram i'll be posting there whenever i have a book review to do or anything else and i see you on the next one bye